Despite advancing digitalization, our world functions in an analog way. This is also how humans perceive analog sizes with their senses. Thus, in order to establish an interface between digital systems and the environment, or us humans, building blocks are needed that convert digital values into analog quantities. In analogy to analog to digital converters, there are therefore also digital to analog converters, or DACs for short. In general, a DAC receives a digital value via some kind of hardware interface and converts it into an analog voltage or current. There are several ways to do this, which, just like with ADCs, cause different types of errors. There are offset errors, gain errors, and integral and differential nonlinearities. In addition, there is also the possibility of bit glitches. Glitches are voltage spikes caused by a change in a digital input value which in turn cause short-term changes in the analog output value. If you want to learn more about the different error types of ADCs and DACs, just watch our video on ADC basics. For now, let's get back to the simplest form of a digital-to-analog converter, the so-called 1-bit DAC. It is simply a switch which connects either ground or the reference voltage to the output. Therefore, the output could be for instance 0 volts if the input is logical low and the reference voltage if the input is logical high. Of course, one can say that two representable output voltage levels are not very satisfying. If you want to increase the resolution by setting several output voltage levels, you could simply divide the reference voltage by a voltage divider and switch the corresponding intermediate voltage levels through to the output. This concept, called addition of equal voltages, is the simplest way to create a DAC with a higher resolution. This DAC topology is also called string DAC. It features an intrinsic monotony and its linearity is dependent on the matching of the resistors. Unfortunately, it needs 2 to the power of n resistors and its resolution is therefore very limited since a lot of resistors need a lot of chip area and cause several other problems. On the positive side, a string DAC is very fast. When a digital input code is applied to the string DAC, it is decoded and the output switch is immediately set to the appropriate configuration. For example, if a full scale code is applied, the top switch closes and the output goes to full scale. In this example, the full scale code of a string DAC produces an output of VREF minus 1 LSB. LSB is the acronym of least significant bit and describes the smallest output change that can be resolved by the DAC. Note in this example that the tap point for full scale is after the first single resistor, giving an output voltage of 7 8 of VREF. When a digital zero code is applied, the lowest switch is closed and the output goes to zero. Ideally, each resistor in the chain produces a voltage drop of equal to 1 LSB. In a simple string DAC design, there is one pair of a resistor and a switch for each code that can be applied to the DAC. For this reason, the number of resistors and switches in the string DAC design increases exponentially with increasing resolution. Since matching resistors to the number of bits is not very practical, achieving good differential and integral nonlinearity performance from a string DAC depends heavily on a good device matching in the IC layout. In general, string DACs have the worst linearity of all precision DAC architectures. The input impedance for the reference node is usually high due to the amount of resistors in the string. This makes most string DACs low power devices, but this comes at the price of increased noise at the DAC output. Let's look at an example with a 3-bit string DAC. Let us assume the code written into the device is 5 or 101 binary. We first close the switch associated with the binary 101. Calculating the voltage at the non-inverting terminal of the amplifier then becomes a simple resistor divider equation. Finally, we get a final value of 5 eighths of the reference voltage. The output buffer in this example features a gain of 1 and is only there that the output does not load the voltage divider and thus falsify the output voltage. A look at the 3-bit DAC transfer function shows 
that our calculated response matches the ideal function. As we have already indicated, the difficulty of matching the resistors means that string DSEs do not give the best integral nonlinearity and differential nonlinearity performance compared to other DSE topologies. Offset, full scale, zero code, and gain errors depend primarily on the output of the amplifier following the resistive ladder. You will notice that the offset and gain errors are extrapolated from the two point line. This means that we measure the output at some codes above zero and some below full scale, draw a line between the two and then extrapolate the values for zero and full scale. We use this extrapolation instead of the actual zero or full scale codes due to the nonlinearities caused by the amplifier's headroom. One advantage of the few switches in the resistor ladder that change at the same time is that it creates only low transient disturbances and therefore hardly any glitches. Unfortunately, the noise performance is not particularly good. The effective resistance of the ladder causes a lot of noise in the system compared to other architectures. String DACs can also be cascaded to avoid using 2 to the power of n resistors. In this configuration, only m times 2 to the power of n over m resistors are needed, where m is the number of cascades. In this video, we learned about the basics of DACs and the simple string DAC. In the coming videos we will look at other DAC topologies. My name is Nikki and I'm with the Institute of Electronics. I hope you've learned something today, but anyway, thanks for watching.